Okay, so today, quick video was to finish off the last bit of the staircase where you've got a handrail that tapers down or tapers up into a, a ceiling and you have to gradually reduce your spindles down. If you're using a turned spindle, then quite often what you end up with is the round section of the turned bit. If you were to cut the angle like usual, as it meets the handrail, you end up with the round profile rather than the nice square end, which you would usually have. So when you come to do your infill strips in between, it's a lot harder because you've got the round. And you can do that just by scribing around each one individually, but here's the way I'm approaching it in this case. So as you can see, as you go along here, all of these are pretty standard and they, where they join into the handrail is a nice square profile so that when we come to put our infill strip in, it's nice and square either side and there's no gaps, it's all seamless. In this case, as we approach the staircase on the way up, they diminish down into a kind of shorter spindle. This is something that you can get bespokely turned uh, by the wood turners. Uh, who are making your spindles and you can get diminishing spindles and that will allow you to kind of carry the same pattern on as you go down they'll just be shorter at a certain point uh, but they'll still come in one piece they're going to cost a little bit more but at least they're ready to go however we didn't realize that at the time so what we've had to do is we've just ordered full length spindles and I had some great tips from a joiner on Facebook who sent me some good advice what he said was that you can just take your square section from the top of the offcuts and if we cut that at a specific point, we can actually get away with joining them in quite a discreet way. Now, of course, in this design, we've got the square section which goes into a few of these sort of donut shaped um, bits here before it gets to the spindle itself, uh, which is kind of a tapered bit. So the tapered bit would be a bad place to cut so really you want somewhere that's going to be the same all the way along. So in this, or on this level I've decided to cut them uh, just at the bottom of this donut bit here. And uh, that's as wide as it needs to be in that if I cut anywhere down the rest of the spindle it's not going to be wider than here. So I've had to do three of these spindles that get reduced in length. The first one I had enough of the square stock that I could just cut in mitre as usual. When it got to these two here, this is where I put the join in. So I haven't painted it yet, but there's a join here and a join here. And those are just created with some dowels. So here's a look at how I did it. usually eyeball it pretty well and then you just twist it until you're nice and square or of course you could lie it down on something flat. So there's the first joint there. Like I say, once we prime and paint that it should be nice and tidy. So that can go in in a minute. Of course just by fitting it whilst, whilst it's kind of just gluing up you can make sure that if the top and the bottom are, are in square that will hold the whole thing square.
treat. The, the tighter you get these strips, the better, because they just lock everything together. And in the first video, when we started the handrail, or the spindles, um, you saw that I had to plane them down with the thicknesser to get them slightly thinner. And also I'm just planing them a couple of passes with a hand plane to get them really snug. Tapping them up in, and although I have put a small pin in each of these spindles, everything really locks in. Um, because all to do with that infill strip really. There's no way that these spindles can come loose uh, if they are done correctly. Having a hardwood handrail and white spindles, I'm guessing is probably the hardest of all the combinations because there's just no room for error, uh, especially if you pre-finish them. All the cuts have to be bang on. I guess if you were doing all in timber then it would be harder to cover up as well. Um, if it's all painted then you've got a little bit more leeway because when you go back around and touch up it'll fill the, fill the tiny gaps you might have but if you can get it nice and tight like that we've got no finishing to do really now because we pre-finished everything to start with. So we've got the last piece, I'm just going to tap down here and that's the last piece of this floor. There's a little bit of trim to do down here on the other side and it didn't help that this original post here wasn't quite straight so I've kind of just allowed for it and gradually matched it up so our spacings are nice and even. So there you go, there's a little tip of how I got around that. I'm on the final home straight now with the staircase so in the next video I'm going to be doing all the snagging on the first section, all the final touches to where we've joined the stair treads and the stair nosing on the edge there, lots of filling, lots of sanding and then once I've done that we can get this carpet uh, laid on the staircase. Now that carpet's being made up uh, this week hopefully so stay tuned for that but remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you next time. Bye.